Now, Vauxhall has promised us an electric version of its entire range, and up till now, we've seen them all, except one, the flagship, if you will. So, ladies and gents, introducing you to the all new Vauxhall Grandland. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below what you think, because honestly, I think it's quite a lovely looking thing. And today, I'm gonna take you around it. But first of all, subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Last year, Vauxhall revealed a really pretty concept car called the Experimental. It was a bit too bonkers for production, but there are a lot of elements which have been translated into this car, the new Grandland. Right, first up, headlights, or Intellilux Pixel HD. So, the outgoing Grandland had 168 pixels. These lights have over 51,000 pixels. Over 51,000, I'm not even joking. So it lights up the road without dazzling anyone. It's a really, really lovely design. And also, you may have noticed, a light up badge. So it was actually only this year that that became legal. So Vauxhall jumped on it. And you also may have noticed the front grille. So down here, we've got some pluses and minuses going on, which is a nice nod to it being electric. So you've got a really nice, simple design down the side with only a couple of creases. Here's one here, which I think looks really nice and stylish. The wheels, now these come uh, available in 19 and 20 inch. These are 20 inch, which I know sound big, but let's be honest, you can get 18 inch in like an iGo now, can't you? So big wheels are definitely a thing. I also really like the design of the wheels because they've got that nice sort of electric wheel design look, as well as the gaps going through, which looks very lovely. Now that is the only sort of chromey look pizzazz that you've got going on on the outside. There's no chrome anywhere else. So you look down here, no chrome up here, no chrome along here, all very neat and satisfying. We've got the two-tone, so this is a black roof with copper coin colour, which I would like to show you a copper coin to compare it, but I don't actually have one because who has cash anymore? In terms of size, this is longer and wider than the original Grand Line. It's actually the first Vauxhall to be based on the Peugeot 3008 platform, which by the way, Ginny has driven that car. If you want to see that review, have a little look on our channel. It is now 4,650 millimetres in length. It's an increase of 173 millimetres versus the current Grandland, giving an extra 20 millimetres increased rear legroom, which isn't a lot in the big scheme of things, but you also get a bigger boot. Now, before I show you the boot, look at that. A full light up badge. How nice is that? This was taken from the Vauxhall concept, which was such a cool design. If you've seen pictures, I'll show you now. Oh, that's good, right? So they've taken that design and put it here. Now we have the compass idea. So we've got like the cross along here and then the brake light is vertical, which I also like to call the hot cross bun look. So this is a full vertical brake light. And then when you do brake, these will go a little bit brighter as well. And also ingrained into the boot is Grand Land. It's all very stylish and just very sexy back here. I can't lie, it looks very nice. Oh, and, uh, Rear wiper, love to see it. Now, inside the boot, this is huge. You've got 550 litres of space. And then if you fold the seats down, you've got 1,640 litres of space. Loads of room. Plus, if you've got your cables or your muddy wellies, etc., you can pop those underneath the boot floor because that lifts up. Lovely. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention this section here, which you might just think is like a design thing but it's been done on purpose. So you see how this breaks off here and here? That's so if you're lugging things and chucking things inside the car, you don't actually damage the paintwork. It just goes in nice and neat. They have thought of everything. <sighs> it is huge back here, like so much space. I mean, that's the joy of pushing the wheels out that little bit further because the leg room is brilliant. You've got a nice little pocket here that you can pop your phone in and then you've got What's that? Cup holders. You could, well, you could put an iPad in there or you could put your fruit pastels or your polos just in there. Perfect fit, lovely. You've got a couple of charge ports down there. You've got back pocket here. You've got a little hook for your coats up here. Honestly, the headroom's really good as well. I think that's largely thanks to the panoramic roof, which by the way, kind of half opens. So this back bit doesn't open, but the front bit 
will be able to open. So it feels really airy and really spacious and just vast back here. I'm a fan of this. This is very nice. And the seats all feel really lovely. They're all sustainable, recyclable, recycled materials. Yeah, lovely. That's nice as well, isn't it? Bit scratchy up there, but that's not... Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Your passengers will be very happy back here, I promise. Storage in here is fantastic. You've got 35 litres of storage dotted around the inside of this cabin. I mean, you've got some space in here, which I can get like my whole arm in there. That's massive in there. You've also got some stuff going on underneath there. The door bins are absolutely massive. You've probably noticed this and gone, what's this? This is the pixel box. Allow me to explain. So this opens up and inside my phone is wirelessly charging. Yeah. So how it works is close that up and when you're driving, that goes black. So then you don't get distracted by your phone. And then as soon as you park up at the end of the day, turn the car off, it will light back up again. So then you don't leave your phone behind. How clever is that? That's really good. You've also got a couple of USB-C ports in there so you can keep everything charged up, a bit more storage in there as well so you can keep your sweets and your snacks and whatnot. I have to give a shout out to the buttons because we do have buttons and knobs and twiddly bits for your aircon, for your climate control, etc., which I am a big fan of. Then you've got like hotkey buttons here for all of your essential bits. Now the screens are really snazzy and nice. So this is top spec, this is the ultimate spec. So this is 16 inches and then that is 10 inches. But in here, built in here, ChatGPT will all be built in, over the air updates, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, lovely. And I really like that it's angled towards the driver. But also what you can do is put it in pure mode, which basically minimalizes everything that's going on on these screens so then you don't get distracted and you can just concentrate on what's going on in front of you and see everything on your head up display. That's good, isn't it? They've thought about everything in here. And honestly, it's really comfortable and cozy. I can't quite explain it. I feel like I'm in like a cozy little cabin, a cozy little cubby. And these seats are really comfortable, but they've been designed to be like that. Right. These are Intelli seats. So they've been designed to care for your lower back essentially so what you've got is like two cushiony bits either side and then a gap down the middle so the gap down the middle means that there's no pressure on your tailbone so essentially you've just got really nice comfy bum cheeks <laughs> like there's a whole like science behind it and german engineering and all that kind of thing but the idea is when you're on a long journey you don't get any pressure on the bottom of your tailbone and it just gives you a nice comfy bum it's good isn't it honestly in here it all feels very plush, very nice, very comfortable. We've also got, put your sunglasses up in there, which I won't be doing because I can tell you now, because I drive so many different press cars, every time I put my sunglasses in one of these, I forget they're there and then I lose my sunglasses. But when you've actually got one because you've bought one, you can use that. We've got a new steering wheel design, which is really lovely to hold. We've got a couple of flappy paddles going on back here. That is for the three levels of regen braking, which is very good. You know, I'm a big fan of regen braking. It's obviously very good for your range and your efficiency, etc. No, I like it. Yeah, I'd have one of these. I would, it's very nice. Now, what's beneath those seats? Understandably, it's very similar to the Peugeot 3008. That means two battery choices. The cheapest will have a 207 brake horsepower front motor and a 73 kilowatt hour battery, giving a range of around 325 miles. A twin motor four wheel drive version will boost the total output to 321 brake horsepower, but is expected to have the same range due to its ability to capture more regen energy under braking. Very clever. The range topper will have a massive 98 kilowatt hour battery, taking the range to a whopping 435 miles. Very nice. Charging to 80% will take around 26 minutes from a DC rapid charger. Oh, and yes, there will be a plug-in hybrid on offer that will give around 53 all electric miles of range. So come on then, what do you think? Uh, I'll be honest, I think it's quite nice. Would you rather have one of these or 
a Peugeot 3008? Or would you rather have one of Ginny's favourites, the Skoda Enyaq? Oh, or the Renault Scenic? Ah, oh, it's tough, this category, isn't it? I'm actually really looking forward to taking this thing for a drive because I think it's going to be really impressive and I think it's going to be a really big seller. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and lovely. Can I take this home with me now? It's got to stay here, right? That's fine. Yeah.